Good evening and welcome on board the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. The deadly political face-off over the killer drones is my top focus on the news track. The opposition accusing the government of overpaying for the killer drones. Except that India hasn't fixed the price yet because the deal hasn't even been signed. So what is the opposition cribbing about? Does India really need these drones and why? All that and more coming up on the news track tonight. Rafal, now Predator. Congress claims dirty drone deal. Is India overpaying for US drones? The big drone deal fact check. Top focus on news track. Lots of misinformation, lies doing the rounds. We'll try and bring them all in perspective for you. Also remember, these are the drones that were used in the taking down of Zayman al Zawahiri, Ayman al Zawahiri, and also uh, Colonel Sul General Suleiman. So there are lots of very significant killings that these drones have accomplished. We'd look at all that and more. Let's get started. Here are the headlines. I'm trying to Congress government in Karnataka files an FIR against BJP IT cell chief Amit Malviya booked over a cartoon video he shared accusing Rahul Gandhi of anti-India actions abroad. Big twist to Karnataka freebies fight. Karnataka government said to transfer cash into accounts of BPL card holders instead of the 5 kgs of free rice. Monsoon mayhem in Mumbai once again. Roads and subways flooded. Several low-lying areas waterlogged. Med department predicts heavy rainfall for the next 4-5 days. Massive protests at Kadalore Chidambaram temple as priests allege take over bid by the Stalin government. Cops enter sanctum, sanctorum of the Nataraj temple. Priests say cops manhandle them. Politics erupts over one day international World Cup. Congress up fume over no matches in Kerala and Mohali. BCCI Vice President Rajiv Shukla says ICC decides the venues for the World Cup, not the BCCI. The Predator drone deal was one of the big highlights of Prime Minister Modi's visit to the United States. The 31 drone deal will be a massive boost to India's intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. But the Congress is smelling a scam. The party today claimed that India is overpaying for the US drones. Here's how this political fight is playing out. Defense Ministry के लोगों ने साफ लिखा था प्रधानमंत्री राफाल मामले में इंटरफेयर कर रहा है। First, it was the Rafale jet deal. जो राफेल डील में हुआ, वही अब प्रीडेटर ड्रोन्स की खरीद में भी दोहराया जा रहा है। Now it's India's upcoming predator drone deal. The Congress party sure has a thing for defense deals. The latest Congress target is the proposed $3 billion predator-type drone deal. That was mentioned by Prime Minister Modi and President Biden during their meet earlier this month. While the predator drone deal is expected to reshape India's defense muscle, the Congress claims a scam in the deal and overpricing even before its signing. This drone ko baki mulk चार गुना कम कीमत में खरीदते हैं उसी ड्रोन को हम 110 मिलियन डॉलर यानी कि 880 करोड़ प्रति ड्रोन 880 करोड़ पर ड्रोन हम खर्च कर रहे हैं द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ डिफेंस हैज रबिशड द चार्जेस ऑफ एनी इररेगुलरिटीज एंड क्लैरिफाइड दैट द प्राइस नेगोशिएशंस आर येट टू हैपन इन द गवर्नमेंट टू गवर्नमेंट डील 
It described the allegations as deliberate fake news to derail the armed drone deal. भारत अमेरिका दोस्ती को बढ़ाने के लिए यमक्यू नाइन बी ड्रोन खरीदने का भी एक समझौता हुआ है जो भारत में ही असेंबल होंगे इनका मेंटेनेंस रिपेयर ओवरहाल भी कहीं पर होगा तो हमारे और आपके देश भारत में ही होगा कुछ लोगों ने लेकर इसको कुछ विवाद भी खड़ा करने की कोशिश की है लेकिन मैं साफ कर देना चाहता हूं उन्हें कहीं कुछ मिलेगा नहीं The Indian Navy came out strongly in favor of the armed drone deal and called it a much needed addition to India's maritime security preparedness. Navy Chief Admiral Hari Kumar told India today that the predator drones will be an asset for the forces. ये बहुत बड़ा capability है. इससे क्या है हमारा area of responsibility को अच्छी तरह you know surveillance और reconnaissance कर सकते हैं. It's a whole ecosystem that will get developed. तो बहुत फायदा ही होगा एज विद द रफाल डील इन 2019, थाउजेंड इज इंडिया प्रेडेटर ड्रोन डील गोइंग टू बी द कांग्रेस वेपन ऑफ चॉइस ऑन द फ्लाइट पाथ टू टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर कीप वॉचिंग इंडिया टूडे एज वी डी कोड दिस अनफोल्डिंग स्टोरी सेपरेट फैक्ट फ्रॉम फिक्शन एंड थ्रू लाइट ऑन एवरी डिटेल ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे The Predator drone is among the deadliest killing machines in the world. It is using the Predator drone that uh, General Soleimani was taken down. Uh, he's the Iranian general. It's using these drones that Ayman al-Zawahiri was taken down in the heart of Kabul in Afghanistan. So the efficacy of these drones is not in question. I just want to take you through some of the features of the Predator drones equipped with air to ground missiles you're not risking your pilots because these are unmanned aerial vehicles uh, they carry smart bombs with precision uh, strike capabilities also very heavy ammunition which allows you to target uh, high value targets whoever it is that you want to target from a far distance uh, they can carry laser and gps guided bombs and ammunition uh, this can be used in high altitude areas they can fly over the sea lanes they can fly in the skies they can be used against china they can be used against pakistan with an endurance capability of over 40 hours remember some of the high end drones that china has supplied to pakistan for example are drones that can stay in the air for about 20 hours this is double uh, that endurance in terms of capabilities and they have thermal imaging cameras you got a very good sense of the area that you're looking at which is how you can take very precise aims So those are just some of the capabilities of the predator drones. Now the point here is that the Congress is sensing a scam. They're saying India is overpaying for these drones, except the fact is that the price at which these drones will be purchased isn't known yet because the deal hasn't been signed. What was announced when I was in the United States uh, covering the Prime Minister's state visit was an in-principle announcement that we will be purchasing these drones. unlike the GEF 414 which was finalized this is an in principle decision and it will be or is supposed to be finalized and price negotiations have been going on for the last several years so what is this scam that the congress is sensing will this turn out to be another rafal for the congress and does the bjp government need to be more transparent in the manner in which uh these drones are being purchased to we'll talk about this and more i'm joined on this broadcast representing the uh, the opposition congress its spokesperson adil singh boparai squaring off against him for military perspective lieutenant general pjs pannu former deputy chief of the indian integrated defense staff i want to tell our viewers that uh, the bjp is not joining because they think this is a matter of national security and that the congress is unnecessarily trying to find a scam when the deal itself hasn't been struck uh for a military perspective i'm joined by colonel ajay shukla leading defense and strategic affairs expert we also have abhijit ayer mitra senior research fellow at the institute of peace and conflict studies and vice vice admiral anup singh former commander in chief of the eastern naval command so let me go across to adil singh boparai first because the congress put out a long chart sheet against the government except that your principal charge is that we are paying four times the going rate of these predator drones now you know something which nobody else does because we don't know yet the price at which these drones are being sold to india 
weapon purchases are complex, what component is for the weapon, what component is for maintenance, uh, for servicing, etc. isn't known this. None of this is known. You've seen some media reports. There's no official declaration of which, pr what price we are buying the Predator drones for. So how do you know there's a scam? Adil Singh Boparai, let's start from there. Well, Mr. Kaval, first and foremost, the entire drone deal is shrouded in opacity. Number one. Number two, paragraph 16 of the Indo-US joint statement categorically records an in-principle intent on behalf of the government. But there's of no India. mention of price. So you're saying you're paying four times. Out. Yes, come go on. Come on. Come on. You'll have to give me uninterrupted 60 seconds. There is an in-principle intent on behalf of the government of India to purchase drones from General Atomics. Now, there are two things which have come out in public domain, and more particularly from your colleague, Mr. Manjeet Negi. I have a copy, and I'm sure the India Today must have done its due diligence before putting this out. Though he says that the deal worth $4 billion has been cleared, but for the purposes of our discussion, let's keep the threshold at $3 billion. Now, please compare this with what other countries have purchased. It's a very, very simple issue which the government of India cannot brush under the carpet. But it's if not that simple. No, one, one, one second, one second. Adil Singh Bopara, that's not how weapons are purchased, sir. It's not as if you can divide 3 billion by 31 drones and calculate the cost of each drone. It depends on what's the kind of weapon systems and I'm sure Abhijit Ayer Mitra and the others will talk about this. It depends on what you buy. You can buy a plain Mr. car, you can buy a car with bells and whistles, you can have high-end bells and whistles. All that determines the price is not 3 billion divided by 31. Mr. Kaval, that is why my opening statement was, this is the caveat which I put out, and this is exactly what Mr. Pavan Khaira has said. The entire deal is shrouded in opacity. Mr. Modi is not spending $3 billion or 25,000 crore rupees from his personal pocket, Mr. Kaval. It is your, mine, and 1.4 billion Indian taxpayers' money. We demand accountability. But and when the deal is announced and clarified, and we will know what all came with it. Speak today. I you am, because... Speak. You are sensing a scam and I'm trying to understand what that scam is because you don't know what we are out. buying for that $3 billion. Dollars. If this pen is purchased, if this pen is purchased by UK, Taiwan, Italy and Netherlands for 1 rupee and India is purchasing it for 4 rupees, then most certainly I think there is a case which is made for clarification, for transparency on behalf of the government of India. Now please bear with me for 30 seconds. Number one, the Defence Acquisition Council clears a purported deal for $3 billion. The Prime Minister records an in-principle intent. It is happening at the level of the President of the United States and the Indian Premier. Certainly it is not in thin air. Number three, now please have the data. US government purchases it for $56 million. UK for $12.5 million. Spain for 46. million. Germany buys it for $17 million. Have we committed a crime if we ask for transparency of taxpayers' money? In my opinion, most certainly not. Number four, any defense deal or any defense purchase under the rules of business has to be approved by the CCS. This is the nodal body. There has been no mention of the CCS. Number five. No, but the CCS the approval comes at a later stage, sir. The CCS approval will happen. Before this deal is announced, there will be a CCS approval. It just happens at a later stage in the whole weapon purchase process. That's the way weapons are purchased. Let the because government of India come out and say that we had recorded this in the statement without going through the CCS process. And why do you circumvent the tender? I again repeat, this is not money coming out of BJP's Dean Dayal office. This is public money. Why don't you have a tender system? When the transfer of technology is a meager 7%, when you've infused 1,700 crore rupees into DRDO for Make in India and Atman Nirvai Bharat, which has been reduced to a cipher, why not have a tender system? Is it a crime if the opposition asks for transparency, Mr. Kavar? This, I again repeat, this is taxpayers' money. The government, as usual, is pushing it under the carpet. These are public reports. If either it's Mr. Mandeep Negi who is misleading the country or the government of India should come out. Whether it's 3 billion, whether it's 4 billion, whether it's 31 drones, whether there is a CCS approval, why has government shelved off a tender process? These are facts. Which okay, must let Abhijit Aya Mitra respond to some of what you are saying. Uh, point number one that other countries seem to have bought the same drones at lesser price than India is paying. Uh, he's quoting what's happened in Australia, what's happened in Belgium, uh, what's happened in Spain, what's happened in France, Italy. These are countries that have bought these drones 
A simple calculation suggests that they seem to have bought the drones at a much cheaper price, uh, 3072 million dollars, which is about, um, you know, which is 3 billion dollars, has been mentioned, leading the Congress to wonder, Abhijit Ayer, whether Dal mein kuch kala hai. Right. Uh, thanks, Rahul. So, you know, the first thing I want to, which you already pointed out is that all the figures being quoted are only quoted by the press. The government statement has said nothing, neither has the Amer American government or the Indian government stated a price. Now, let's talk about the quoted price, say about 3.5 to 4 billion dollars. Now, if you notice in the breakup that my uh, co-panelist just gave, notice how wildly those prices vary. The lowest he quoted was some 12 to 15 million dollars and the highest was something like 56 million dollars. Why is this? Because the platform, the additional systems development and the payload all cost different things. So, you know, sometimes the payloads can be twice the price of the platform. Sometimes the price of the special, uh, uh, you know, the country specific developments can be two, three times the price of the platform. Right. Now, let's look at specifically what we know from the public record about the India specific modifications. And I'm just talking about what I've managed to collect with open source. The first is that the uh, drone uses the same Garrett TPE-331. It, it's now a Honeywell TPE-331 that the Dornier aircraft uses, the engine. Okay, there are a few more blocks that have been added to it by Honeywell. So it is already using a domestically manufactured engine with some more inputs from Honeywell that will be integrated onto this drone. Okay, next, what has happened is, you saw that uh, a lady entrepreneur who was sitting, Brinda Kapoor, I think, was sitting next to uh, Satya Nadella, who was sitting next to Biden at that state uh, uh, lunch or dinner or whatever it was. Uh, that was for a whole bunch of highly sensitive payload systems, including a gigapixel camera, which will take several years to integrate. And those are very, very expensive processes to integrate in there. Okay. Now, I want you to refer to pa Chapter 1, Para 29G of the Defense Procurement Manual for, uh, 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 for uh, 2020, okay, which is the buyer-nominated equipment. And I will read this out if you give me a minute. Aero engines and fabrication plants, paragraph G. Aero engines and fab in brackets facilities manufacturing silicon wafers need to be taken up as projects of national importance. Aero engines and fab manufactured in India will mandatorily be procured for applicable defense equipment as buyer nominated equipment slash sub assemblies. These procurements will not be considered as single vendor cases, which means it has to be part of a much larger complex procurement. You're not going to buy the engine offhand like that. So one thing is that we know that the current TPE-331 will have to be upgraded to the level of the Predator drone. The next thing is the India-specific payloads will have to be integrated into it. The third thing which we know, which has been put out in the joint statement, and I will read the relative part of the joint, uh, the uh, sort of applicable part of the joint statement, will enhance the ISR capabilities, this is paragraph 16, will enhance the ISR capabilities of India's armed forces across domains as part of this plan General Atomics will also establish a comprehensive global maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility in India to support India's long-term goals. Global MRO. Please note, that means all of Asia, all the General Atomic MQ-9s operating in the Asia-Pacific will come here for MRO facilities. Okay. All of this adds to the cost. Integration sometimes adds two, three times to the cost. So again, you know, it's very curious that my colleague brought up the incredible variable variations in price of each country. He's also Does questioning why the deal didn't go before the CCS. Why is it that just on the back of what the Defense Acquisition Council said, where it well, accorded again, the acceptance of necessity, that this deal has been announced in principle in a joint statement to the U.S. without going to the CCS? They're questioning that. Absolutely. So, you know, very important question. The point is, it goes to the CCS after the entire process is complete and price negotiations are complete. Uh, again, if you read the DPP, that's what comes out. Uh, if, if you read, uh, uh, again, paragraph 16, Prime, uh, President Biden and Prime Minister Modi welcome India's plan, no contract, to procure the General Atomics MQ-9. Now, let me tell you what has happened so far. The Defense Acquisition Committee has 
uh, recognize the AON, that is the acceptance of necessity. As of now, it is just India needs this. Now an RFP will be floated. So he Many says, why can't it be through be a tender? Why does it need to be a government to government contract? Because the tender comes after this. This is where the requirement for the RFP gets floated after this. No, but he says you already decided that you're buying the Predator. Then what's the point of the tender? Th this is the main, uh, uh, this thing. So uh, this is the preferred uh, acquirer. In the RFP, if somebody gives you a better uh, 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 specs and things like that. They're but you've already put in the joint the statement that we are buying it from the US. No, we have not. Again, let me read out the statement to you. President Biden and Prime Minister Modi, I'm quoting, welcomed India's plans to procure the General Atomic MQ-9B. There is no contract. The RFP will still be floated. This is how it goes. The DAC determines the acceptance of necessity. Then the RFP is floated. Quotes will be provided. Uh, down selection will happen. Price negotiations will begin. They will then go to the CCS for the final approval. Colonel Ajay Shukla, between having the Predator drones and not having the Predator drones, there is no question about the fact that having these drones is useful for the Indian Army, Navy, uh, and if possible, the Air Force. We don't know the price at which these drones are being bought. You're a military man yourself, and you know well that what comes along with the platform is as important as the platform itself. Do you think the Congress has shot the, uh, has jumped a bit in advance? in declaring this a scam because they'll now try and keep finding a scam between now and 2024 without allowing for the deal itself to be announced so that we know what is coming for this price? Yeah, uh, Rahul, uh, you know, I guess what goes round comes around. And the BJP, at the time that the Congress was making the, the purchases and facing all these exactly the same problems, uh, the BJP lost no chance in accusing it of uh, sort of corruption and so on. And now it's the chickens coming home to roost. Both the Congress and the BJP know very well what the purchase procedure and the acquisition procedure is. They are playing a game and the game is a political, uh, it's a political blame game. Now, a couple of things that uh, Abhijit spoke about and but I would add on to those. Uh, the first thing to remember is that the decision about whether to go in for a military to mili uh, government to government purchase or whether to do a commercial purchase which they call fms foreign military sales uh, this is a, a, a strategic decision an economic decision and a decision that uh, sort of the government of the day is best does finished. anybody else have a comparable drone which might be made available to india obviously we can't buy from china Russia is no I longer would, reliable. Uh, I would just say that the Chinese have a comparable drone. No, but they're not they selling it to us, of course. Neither do we want their drones. They'll never... But the Chinese are not going to give it to us. Similarly, the Israelis have drones that are slightly smaller, uh, but they don't serve the purpose. Now, just remember, I have to add on to what I was saying earlier. The decision to go in for a government-to-government -government purchase almost guarantees you that you will get it cheaper than if you go in for a foreign military sales. Why program. is that? Why is that? I think Adil needs to hear that. I'll, I'll, I'll explain this to you. I wish Mr. Modi had devoted one of his monkey baths to explaining this to the public because it would have saved a lot of trouble. Now, the reason why buying from the government in a, a sort of government-to-government -government contract is cheaper is because there is nobody who is better at keeping control of prices than the U.S. government. And when they buy, for example, they buy a drone for, from, from General Atomics, the, the current drone that we're talking about, the Predator, the Sea Guardian, they say, we bought 25 drones from you last month or last year. That was the price at which you sold it to us. Now we are buying 25 more drones. So that price has to come down. It is uh, economy of scales kicking, uh, kicking in. And this is something that is an integral part of uh, U.S. Okay. procurement, domestic procurement. Uh, and when you go in for a government-to-government -government policy, the, the U.S. government treats the Indian government the same way as the U.S. government would treat the uh, Pentagon if they were buying the, the Because the whole sort of game in the U.S. 
is to keep driving down prices. Now, Adil Singh Bopar, I respond to what Colonel Shukla is saying because here's a man who's been quite critical of the government on various military issues. He's a military man himself talking about how uh, the price is lesser when you buy government to government and more importantly, with China flexing its muscles in the way that it is across the line of actual control, Pakistan up to no good, China's Navy's presence in the Indian Ocean region, India, to my mind, desperately needs these drones. The sooner we can get them, the better. We're already several years late on buying them. Pavan Sab, let me, let me clarify this and let me put this out so did Mr. Pavan Khaira in the press conference. The Congress party is all for defense, modernization and preparedness. I think that's beyond any cavern of doubt. There is no dispute in that. The problem arises is that whether the government of India is getting the best bang for the buck. I think that you don't is know that problem. yet. You don't know what the bang is. You don't know what the buck is. Hear me out. You don't either. Hear me out. There is an international comparison which is being done, and I tend to differ. I beg to differ with what Mr. Shukla has said. The manufacture of these drones is General Atomics. What appears is that the government of the United States is playing the role of an intermediary and selling these drones by a G2G contract. Now, there are two issues here. Number one, it could be that the government of the United States, which had purchased this for the U.S. Air Force, is selling its own inventory. This has to be clarified. Or is it that the U.S. government is purchasing fresh drones from General Atomics and selling it to the government of India? That is why the nub of the matter, Mr. Kabal, is transparency on behalf of the government. We are all for modernization. However, since it is taxpayers' money, it should not be that the government is paying four times or three times or seven times the price. You don't know whether it's four times or three times or seven times. That's the whole point. You're leveling this charge without knowing. No, no, there are two aspects here. There are two aspects here. Number one, an in principle commitment. An in principle commitment bypassing the RFP, bypassing the tender process in a joint statement of two premiers. Let's not undermine this declaration of interest. Number one. Number two, and the more important part, the DSC cleared a purported proposal of $3 billion. Now, what is the arms package? Of course, this is going to be dependent on certain contingent factors. There could be that there is a particular drone which is more defense or arms package vis-a-vis -vis the other. The fact of the matter is that if you draw an international comparison, it is evident that the government of India is paying much more in comparison to other countries. No, it's not, because you don't know what's analogy. coming for that package. I just explained as simply as I could, in the purchase of any car, you can Why buy the base version of a car, tender? you can buy a high-end version of the car, tender? the please price could go from 20 question. lakhs to 60 lakhs, depending on what car you buy. Please answer this question. There is a reason why, when it comes to distribution of public resources, we follow a tender process. There is a okay, reason. let me put that, that question. Let me let me put Why that question to General Pannu and to Admiral Anup Singh. I'll start with General Pannu first. Could this? You've been in the Integrated Defence Staff, sir. Should this have gone through a tender process rather than being a government-to-government -government deal, sir? Uh, Rahul, um, I think uh, we have to move this debate on our necessity. Uh, I think the military requires um, autonomous uh, uh, aerial system like the Predator, and I think uh, this is a modern version, advanced version, MQ-9 uh, Reaper. Uh, this is the best in the world, and uh, uh, considering our situation on the borders and our adversary pushing the autonomous systems, uh, very soon we are going to see more and more autonomous systems in the battlefield, and I think we need to pitch for the best, and these are the best systems which are going to be no, available. Sure. I think the Congress is asking, could this have been done through a tender rather than being done shrouded in secrecy as a government-to-government -government deal? Uh, well, uh, military does not bother whether it is tender or uh, uh, FMS or government-to-government. -government. I think the faster it gets deployed, better it is. Because, uh, after all, the delay is not in the interest of the country. And many times we find that the procurement process uh, gets much delayed and also, you know, gets a bad name to the equipment when it is not so. You know, question is like before's. It's a very good equipment. It actually ran into trouble because of the name that there is a scam attached to it. I think we have to go ahead with the drones. I think future is of the drones. The future warfare is going to be won if we have invested in drones. I think you make a very important point, General Pannu, that through the government-to-government -government route, you're able to expedite the purchase of these weapon systems rather than taking several years as you go round by round testing out the equipment. Uh, Admiral Anup Singh, 
explain to Adil Boparai, the Congress and everyone watching at this time, why the Indian Navy would benefit from the presence of these drones and are you suspicious that maybe we are paying more than is warranted for this uh, transaction? No, the simple answer is that we need a dramatic shift to the situational awareness at sea and so in the air and so over our land borders. Mm -hmm. And this entire debate about, you know, RFPs being floated, etc. Where, where else have you got an equivalent uh, drone? Is there at all any equivalent, sir? There is no equivalent. This is the only UCAV and UAV which is battle hardened over Afghanistan, over Al Zawahiri, over General Soleimani and um, Syria. Where else have you got any? There's nobody else who has anything China. similar. No. And if somebody says the Chinese, God alone knows, first of all, do you want to buy anything that is Chinese? No, most certainly not. Would it be reliable? No, the Second. Chinese have two SEP systems, the Kai Hong 4, the Wing Loom 2. These have been supplied to Pakistan. These can apparently stay in the air for about 20 hours and fly at speeds of 370 uh, kilometers per hour, which is much less than the capabilities of the Predator drones. We're actually quite lucky that we're getting them, and if we can get them faster, better. Isn't that the point you're making, Admiral Panu? Um, uh, first of all, Rahul, insofar as China is concerned, sorry, it's a no-no, not of only course. for me, but for the three defense forces. B, reliability. C, this drone is 40 plus hours of endurance and right. it is heal. And a lot of noises are being made. What about DRDO? What about this? What about that? DRDO has been able to make an equivalent of a male, a medium altitude, long endurance uh, UAV. We need a hail and 40 plus hours. Can you imagine going to the so Malacca? Explain that to viewers in simpler terms. What's the difference between what the DRDO has made domestically and the capabilities of the Predator? Admiral Anup Singh. High altitude, long endurance. We haven't reached there in so far as indigenous development is concerned. How long could it take the DRDO to get there? I think they need a lot of transfer of technology in so far as gains are concerned. And please remember, this fellow apart from 40 plus hours of endurance with limited payload will have, still have about 24 to 30 hours with full payload of almost two tons of ammunition, including air to surface or air to ground missiles, etc. There is just no comparison. Adil Singh Bopara, you are hearing from the Admiral and from the General from the Army. There simply is no weapon system that compares and if we are getting it through a government to government deal, we get it sooner. And if the Americans are willing, willing to make some of what they already have available in stock with their forces or with, general, or with the company that's manufacturing them and make them available to us quickly, we should be thankful that we are getting these weapon systems nobody as quickly as we are. Answering, Kamal Saab, nobody is answering the elephant in the room. Which is? And the elephant in the room is the price comparison. I think that is the nub of the matter and I'm saying this at the cost of repetition. But what are you comparing what with? You can't compare apples and oranges. If a whole if MRO system compare, for maintenance, repair, overall is being set up in India, well, if all the drones sold analogy, across the Asia analogy, come by there... By the same analogy, by the same analogy uh, Mr. Kaval, the government of India is not purchasing vegetables from a market. This is 25,000 crore rupees of taxpayers' money. We cannot take the logic to a point of an over-the-counter purchase. There are RFPs, there are processes. And those processes have been designed and envisaged to ensure the best bang for the buck. And one time-tested method is a tender process. On one hand, you circumvent the tender process when you make an in-principle intention in a joint statement. Number two, DSC says $3 billion. The government of India shouts the entire deal in secrecy. There is no transparency. There is no indication as to the value of per group. What is the opposition and what is the country supposed to Let think? me put that question to Give General the Pannu. That to this government. That the, the argument the Congress is making is that the US bought these same drones at $56 million per drone. The UK Air Force bought them at $12.5 million per drone. The Australian government at $137.58 million per drone, but later cancelled because they found the price too costly. Spain at 46, Taiwan at 54 million, Italy and Netherlands at 82 million, Germany at 17 million. And India, if the price that's been announced is the price at which the drone is bought, each drone would effectively cost $110 million. Is that too much or is that totally the wrong way of looking at 
how this weapon system is being acquired. General Pannu. Uh, Rao, you look at uh, the system per se, it carries modular payloads. It has got the EO, IER and Linux uh, multi-mode radars, which are very rare to have as a combination. It has got the ESM and laser designators and illumination. It has got a C-band uh, line of sight data links. It has got KU-band beyond line of sight SATCOM data link. It is transportable and uh, uh, self-deployable. Uh, uh, so as a result, the kind of payload that it carries, the kind of loitering and the range that it gives you, you cannot say that what others have because they are very uh, different uh, variants of the same uh, predator. MQ-1 was different. MQ-1C Grey Eagle was different, MQ-9 okay. was different, and also when you're talking about the kind of uh, deal it is, most of it is going to be assembled in India, and about 15 to 20 percent just might come to the Indian companies for uh, building components, which will give a good business to India, 10, uh, 10 percent of the total sales. But and other thing, Boparai, some of the arguments in the Congress's press release are rank juvenile, and I explained to you why. The Congress press release says, whereas each Predator Reaper drone from General Atomics will cost uh, 812 crores, India can make these drones at 10-20% of the cost. What, what are you saying? We don't have the technology to make these drones. It's not maybe 15-20 years later we will, but God alone knows what China has done by then. We need these drones now. How do you think India can make these drones at 10-20% cost? Well, you're missing the woods for the trees, Mr. Kavar. What are the woods and what are the I, trees? I find, I, find, I find nothing juvenile. Number one, we Sir, are Sir, do dealing... you think DRDO, one second, Adil Silmoparai, do you think the DRDO can tomorrow provide the Indian Army a system comparable to the Predator drone? Number one, we are not dealing with two individuals going to the market and purchasing something. So you are making this argument, sir, me in me your press release, page 3, para 1, you say India can make this, DRDO can develop the same in just 10 to 20 percent of the cost. The whole reason we have to buy the GE 414 deal is because for 30 years we couldn't make the Kaveri engine. Mr. The, the, the length of your question is more than my answer. So please give me some adequate time. This government has infused 1700 crore rupees this financial year for modernization of the road program to the DRDO. Does that mean that that money is gone down the drain? No, it's but not. Uh, let me respect. explain. They are building the male, which is the medium altitude long endurance Rustum. They are building the Ghatak, so which is a stealthy if autonomous if unmanned you, combat you, aircraft you vehicle. You just ask, heard, we don't have a long range uh, unmanned aerial vehicle of this kind. So, so if I take cue from what you are saying, let's throw the processes out of the window. Let's throw the IRFP out of the window. Let's throw the tender process out of the window. And let's go purchase it from the highest somebody who's selling it to us at the highest rate. Is that Abhiji your Abhiji Tayar, Abhiji Tayar, the argument? Congress press release really says that the DRDO can make this drone for 10, 20 percent of the cost. What do you want to say to Abhiji? Uh, what do you want to say to others? Sir, your press release says it. Whether, whether you say it or not, sir. So whether you say it or not, your press release is saying the DRDO can make this for 10, 20 percent of the cost. That's ridiculous. Every country which has purchased this drone has purchased it at four times the rate. I wonder what veterans... Abhiji Tayar, Abhiji Tayar, the Congress thinks the DRDO can make this for 10, 20 percent of the cost. Abhiji Tayar. Right. Uh, Rahul, uh, do you know when the first flight of the Rustam drone was? The Rustam was meant to be our equivalent. Uh, it, it has been in development since 2009. Since 2009. What's the status right now? It has been in development. Uh, it is still in development. It's it not ready? Do we? It's no. still not ready. Can we buy it? Can the okay. Air Force, Navy, Army buy it or not? O obviously not. Obviously not. I mean, you can't buy a prototype. Right. Uh, has your first operational squadron of LCA come online, of the Tejas come online? How long have we been developing it? Uh, since 1986 or something like that? What happened to the Kaveri engine? You know, I find it really scary that, you know, uh, the gentleman said that it's the elephant in the room that nobody's addressing prices and things. Did I not explain the prices? I'm sorry, was I talking about uh, butterflies and bees before? Did I not explain what are the equipment that's going into it and the pricing of the payload and what we know from public uh, sources about what is going into this particular system? You tell me, when has the DRDO actually delivered on their promises so far? 
The missile program is an absolute success, yes, because it comes directly, it comes under nuclear uh, specific programs and it comes directly under the PMO. But you tell me all things that don't come under the PMO, what is the delivery rate been? I really want our panel to Google the Rustam drone right now. The Colonel Rustam Shukla, to be Colonel Shukla the Congress press release drone. says DRDO can develop these same drones for 10-20% of the cost. What do you want to tell Adil Singh Boparai and those who think that this is possible? Uh, there are two aspects, remember. The cost is just one aspect. The time frame is the second, second sure. aspect. So the, uh, the drone uh, would have to be developed by the DRDO, both in a uh, sort of specified time frame and in a specified cost. Now, I would just draw to the attention of your viewers the fact that the government, this, the same government that we're uh, sort of elected, BJP, uh, has given a list of 309 systems, which the import of which will not be allowed on subsequent years dating from now till 2025. And therefore, if the drone is not to be imported beyond uh, after 31st December 2024, uh, then it is the government itself which has put the weight of its authority behind this. And the government itself that is saying the DRDO is perfectly capable of making a drone and therefore we are relying on it. Now, we can uh, sort of uh, engage in DRDO bashing uh, in every television program in this country. It's a national sport in some ways after cricket. Uh, but the fact is that the government itself has thrown its weight behind it with the Atman Nirbhar campaign, with the IDX uh, sort of uh, initiative. And the government itself is saying that we will withdraw, we will uh, uh, sort of buy drones only up to 31st December 2024. I'm giving an example. And after that, we will import it. Uh, after that, we will uh, make it ourselves. Now, remember, when the government pushes through a contract like this, what the government is really saying is that there's this cutoff line of 2025 or 2026, whatever it is. We will not be able to buy it from abroad after that. So let's buy it quickly now because we will be stuck with what we have or, and with the DRDO's capabilities uh, such as they are to build new, new drones. So it is extremely important to read between the lines. The Congress is saying, uh, is taking advantage to accuse the BJP, but the BJP has not been above board either. Uh, they, they yeah, are sure. Now, now here's what I want to leave our viewers with. Imagine a scenario that there is a terror strike, God forbid, in India, and now India wants retaliation. Uh, let's assume for a moment that the strike emerged from Pakistan. You want to take down, say, Sayyid Salahuddin, Masood Azhar, Hafiz Said. The Predator drone is the best way of doing this. You're not sending, uh, you know, your pilots in the sky, so what happened with the MiG-21 is not required to happen here. You send a drone in, you take down your high-value target. Hopefully you know where the terrorist is. You're able to get a precise lock and you take him down. This weapon system is priceless in terms of its capabilities and what it brings to the table. And the very dangerous part of playing politics with national security is that you could imperil Indian national security. To say that the DRDO can make it uh, at 10, 20 percent of the cost is a plain fallacy. God only knows how many years in the future, if at all, ever will they be able to make it. Those are harsh realities. China flexing its muscles, terror camps continuing to flourish inside Pakistan. Those are harsh realities. Don't pay fast and lose with national security, even if you're in opposition at that moment, because that is a very deadly game to play. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. For your time and your trust, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, goodnight.